Number one asks us what number should be added to the expression x squared minus 15x to result um, in an expression equivalent to a perfect square. So we've got x squared minus 15x, and we want to figure out what would go in here to make it a perfect square. So remember for a perfect square, this number here is going to be your b term divided by 2 squared. So we want to take this negative 15 here, and we want to divide it by 2, which is negative 7.5, and then we want to square it, and that would give us positive 56.25. Number two, Noah uses the quadratic formula to solve this equation, and he gets answers of negative 2.5 or 1. But when he checked his answers back in, they didn't work. So what was his mistake? Um, so we see that he used this equation here, or we have this equation here. And then you can see here that Noah said the A value was 2, the B value was 3, and the C value was negative 5. However, we have to have the equation equal to zero. So you need to bring this four over and get the equation equal to zero. Um, so this C value is actually incorrect. And then it asks us to solve the equation correctly. So we would minus four to both sides. And so then our actual equation that we would use to be able to put into the quadratic formula would be 2x squared plus 3x minus 9 equals 0. So the C value that we want to use is actually negative 9. Um, so in this equation, remember that it's, um, let me write down the quadratic formula. So it's the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c and then all over 2a. So the only thing that he did incorrectly was this c term should have been negative 9. So in his work, this negative 5 right here um, should be negative 9. So let's recalculate under here. Um, so 3 squared is 9. And then negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And negative 8 times negative 9 is plus 72. So this number underneath our root, so let me um, just write this down. So we have x equals, this part was correct for him. So the radical or underneath the root now should have been 81 over 4. And then... Um, so this is negative 3 plus or minus 9 because the square root of 81 is 9. So then we'll calculate each of these. So the first solution we have is negative 3 plus 9 divided by 4. And then the second one we have is negative 3 minus 9 over 4. So negative 3 plus 9 is 6 over 4, which simplifies to 3 halves or negative 3 minus 9 is negative 12, divided by 4 is negative 3. So these are the two solutions he should have gotten. Number three, solve each quadratic equation in whichever method you choose. Um, so quadratics, I'm going to get this, I'm going to add this 1 to both sides so that I can get it equal to 0. So then I have x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. And then this is factorable because I know that the factors of positive 1 that add to negative 2 are negative 1 and negative 1. So this factors to x minus 1 times x minus 1. And then I would take these factors and set them equal to 0 and solve, but it's the exact same factor, so I'll just do it once. So then add 1 to both sides, so then we get x equals 1 as our solution. Part B again has the x squared and the x. So I'm going to bring this 23 over so that we can get the equation equal to 0. So we have x squared plus 8x um, minus 9 equals 0. So our a value is 1, so I can just look at negative 9 for factors that add to 8. 
Um, and I know that um, those factors would be a plus one and a minus nine. So, or sorry, that's wrong. Um, that's backwards. So we want the middle term to be plus eight. So it's going to be minus one and plus nine because negative one times nine is negative nine and negative one X plus nine X is positive eight X. So then we'll set each of these factors equal to zero and solve. So we would add one to both sides here and we would subtract nine from both sides here to get our two answers of X equals one and X equals negative nine. Part C, we see an X squared, but it doesn't have this X term. So we can actually just add the 15 back over because then, then we have X squared equals 15 and we know we can square root both sides here. So undoing a squared um, gives us a plus or minus square root of 15 as our solution. Then this last one, um, has a seven as our a value. So we can't just look for the factors of negative five that add to the middle. Um, so you actually multiply these two terms, negative 35 X squared, and look for factors of negative 35 that add to negative two. Or you can use quadratic formula. Um, and so there are factors of negative 35 that add to negative two. It's negative seven X and positive five X. So then we can put this into our factoring box and because now we know that it's factorable. So I'm going to put this polynomial here, 7x squared minus 2x minus 5. And then we know that the factors of negative 35, which again was when I multiplied the x squared times the constant, that add to negative 2x, this middle term, are negative 7x and positive 5x. So then you take out what's in common on this top row. So they both have a seven in common and they have an x in common. Now you just fill in the missing pieces. So 7x times x gives us 7x squared. 7x times negative one gives us negative 7x. And x times five gives us 5x. And then I always check this final box to make sure. So five times negative one is negative five. So then this polynomial um, factors to X plus, or sorry, X minus one times seven X plus five. And we have that equal to zero. So now we can take each of these factors and set them equal to zero and solve. So then add one to both sides and get X equals one. Here we'll subtract five from both sides to get seven X equals negative five. And then we'll divide by seven to get our other solution of X equals negative five sevenths. Number four, what are the solutions to this equation? And we can see that they're doing the quadratic formula. So we're gonna add three over so that we have this equal to zero. So plus three to both sides. And then you can see that your A is one, your B is negative four, and your C is positive three. So remember that the quadratic formula is um, the opposite of the B, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times A times C. And then all of that divided by 2a. So when we look here, um, we see that this front term, okay, this b, they have as 4 until you get to the bottom, it's negative 4. So we want the opposite of b. Well, here's our b term is negative 4. So the opposite of b would be 4. So it's definitely not d. Um, then they do 16 as b squared. Well, negative 4 squared is 16. So this part right here is 16. And then minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 3. So this should be 16 minus 4 times 1 times negative 3. 
So four times one, so this says zero. So this is wrong because our A value is not zero. Um, this one says 16 minus four times one times negative three, so it's B. Here they had the C value as three instead of negative three. Number five, which expression is equivalent to the square root of negative 23? So remember that negative 23 is negative one times 23. So we can write it as square root negative one times square root 23. And then we know that the square root of negative one is I. So this is equal to I times the square root of 23, which is D. Number six, write the expression in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. So this just means to simplify it, not have any i squareds. Um, so for this one, remember that i squared is negative one. So five times negative one is just negative five. Second one, we've got two i squareds. So we've got i squared, which is negative one, times i squared, which is negative one. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Part C, we have negative 3i squared. So this is negative 3i times itself. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. i times i is i squared. And then i squared is negative 1. So 9 times negative 1 is negative 9. Part D, seven times four I is just 28 I, nothing else to simplify there. And then part E, we're subtracting this term. So I like to change this to adding and then the opposite of each of these. So adding positive three, adding negative two I, then combining our like terms. So we've got five plus three, that gives us eight. And then we have 4i plus negative 2i. So 4i plus negative 2i is 2i. So 8 plus 2i is what E simplifies to. Number 7, let m equal this expression and k equal this. Write each expression in the form a plus bi. All right, so we have um, k minus m. And K is 3I, and M is 7 minus 2I. So we don't really need parentheses here since it's only one thing. And then we're going to be subtracting 7 minus 2I. So make sure that you distribute that negative in to the parentheses. So we're going to be adding negative 7I and then adding positive 2I. So 3I plus 2i is 5i, so when we add the imaginary parts together, we get 5i. And then our real part is negative 7. So I'm going to put that first with a plus 5i. This next one will be k squared. So we're going to take the k term, which is 3i, and square it. So 3i squared. Um, you can bring the two into each piece and do three squared and I squared, or you can think of it as um, three I times three I. So then three times three is nine and I times I is I squared. Then we'd be doing nine times negative one because I squared is negative one. So this would be negative nine. In this next one, we're doing m squared. And m is seven minus two i. So then this is really seven minus two i times seven minus two i. So you can do this in the box or by distributing. Um, so I'm just gonna distribute this one. So seven times seven is 49. Seven times negative two i is negative 14 i. Negative 2i times 7i is negative 14i. And negative 2i times negative 2i is plus 4i squared. So then remember that i squared is negative 1. 
So four times negative one is negative four. So then 49 plus negative four is 45. And then negative 14 plus negative 14. So negative 14 I plus negative 14 I is negative 28 I. And then this last one asks us to do K um, times M. So K again was um, 3i. So we're doing 3i times 7 minus 2i. So we'll just distribute this 3i in. So 3i times 7 is 21i. 3i times negative 2i is negative 6i squared. I squared is negative one times negative six is positive six. And then we'll just write it with the real part first. So six plus 21 I.